Hi everyone, it's Louise with Louise McKay Art. So today I'm going to do something with resin. I'm going to show you how I resin my CDs for clocks. And I may or may not show you what I'm going to do to resin with mica powder a ceramic plate. Because I've never done it before and it'll be my first try. I'm going to have a recording of it so I may or may not show you depending how it all turns out. But first of all, let me show you all the things I need for resining. I have one more point right. though. I do heat up both my resin and my hardener in a little warm bath for about 10 minutes before I start. Number one, it's cold here. So I wanna give it, um, make it thin, thin it down a little bit if I can uh, to reduce the amount of bubbles I stir into it. And the other thing, I had been resining and realizing what I would do before is I would measure out my uh, resin and then put it in a warm bath and between measuring it and looking at it after I had it in a warm bath, it would expand. So then I didn't know whether I was going to put in, like, if I started with 40 and it ends up with 45 after warm, do I end up putting 45 of the hardener in or only 40? I don't know. So I warm them both up at the same time. So they're both expanded at the same rate. So when I measure them, I feel like I'm getting the same amount each time. I realized I had a problem because as I was getting lower in my container, my uh, hardener was taller. I had more hardener left than I did resin. So um, yeah, I don't know what I was doing. So anyway, just want to throw that out there. I warm them up both together and I'll get you started in a second. All right, thanks. So first and foremost is safety and I have a respirator and gloves. I wear two pairs of gloves, uh, nitrile gloves on the outside uh, so as I go through the resin process, I may have to remove a pair of gloves and I'll still leave me with a pair of gloves on. Have my stir stick, my little, um, this is a hundred mil cup. I don't know if you can see that. And, uh, isopropyl alcohol and heat gun, which I just got the heat gun back in uh, November. And this thing has been fantastic for getting out air bubbles. And then I have my resin. This is the KS resin that I use for all my coasters and tiles and things and what I'm going to use today. I also have some resin powder, mica powder that I'm going to try to use today. We'll see how this goes, but I've got stir sticks. I've got my color selected and I've got cups I'm going to put it in, put the regular uh, clear resin in and then I'll mix it up with the mica powder and then I'll pour it into that plate and we'll see what we get. And over there, just so you know, this is how I have it set up. I usually keep this section of my workshop covered with tents so that no dust is getting in there. And every so often I'll take all the stuff off and I'll shake everything out. But these are the three CDs I'm gonna resin today. And this is the ceramic tile plate I'm gonna uh, work on. And if you can see, I've scuffed up the ceramic on it to give the resin a better time to bite into the um, into the ceramic so all right folks so what i'm showing you here is the resin that i'm starting with pour first now this is after i've heated both the resin and the hardener in the warm bath for about 10 minutes i'm putting in 20 milliliters and i had to hold it up to the light so i can see it better that's why i didn't do it on the table because I want to make sure I've got it exactly right. Because in this recipe from KS Resin, it's a one-to-one -one ratio of uh, resin that I apply first to the hardener that I'm going to apply next, another 20 mils. So I'm going to have a total of 40 milliliters here of resin, which is about just over uh, an ounce and a half of resin for these three CDs. So here I'm just showing you how much the 40 milliliters is with the resin and the hardener inside. And then the next thing is I'm going to mix it and the required time for this is four minutes. And I'm speeding through this because you don't need to see me mixing for four minutes straight. But what's important here when you're mixing the resin is that you keep the stick at the bottom to take all the stuff off, all this um, resin off the bottom and then you scrape your sides so you make sure you get everything incorporated. And as you're mixing it, you're going to see like little streamers come through and it's going to get cloudy. That's normal. You're going to mix bubbles into it. That's normal. You can't avoid it. 
I know when I was first learning how to do this, I freaked out over all the bubbles I was getting, but they'll come out. Also, as I'm going here, I am scraping the stick to make sure I can get all the soft the stick back incorporated into the container. So once the four minutes is up, I stop and then I um, get ready to pour. So now the resin's ready to go. It should be clear by now. It's gonna be clear and it's gonna have bubbles in it. It's normal. So now I'm just moving the CDs into view so you can see what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna put equal quantities onto each of the CDs here. So I figured I needed about 12 milliliters of the epoxy for each one. And uh, here's the other thing about the last one here I'm pouring. I could have just tipped over the cup on top and just let it all drain out. That's the easier way to do it. I don't know why I did it this way for the camera, but you could scrape it as well and also pour all the excess in there. So you can see I have about equal quantities of, of epoxy on all three CDs. So I only use my finger and I just basically push it to the side from the center, make sure I'm covering all the area as I'm going and then I also run my finger along the side just like I do with the coasters. It's really quite simple. Now you notice my rubber band on my finger there. Now that is there for a reason because these gloves are larger than my hands. What happens is when I'm pushing the resin to the edges, the glove will start to slip down and my finger will get longer and it just gets harder to do. So I just rubber band the glove onto my finger there very loosely, not, not tourniquet style, just so I can have that glove stay taut while I'm pushing all of the resin to the sides. Yeah, and I just go around the entire disc until everything's covered. And then I check it in the light. I have lights on this side of the camera where you guys are seeing this. So I have a good back view into the light as to how many bubbles I've got, how much dust I might have in there, and also any blank spots. And if you have any blank spots, any spots that missed, you want to make sure you cover it before you go away from this process. Also, one other thing I didn't mention about the beginning, even before I started with this, now the backs are taped, before I started resining, I did spray a paper towel with uh, alcohol. I think it was 70% alcohol and just wiped it down so that there was no remnant uh, hands from my oil from my hands on the CD that might repel the resin as I'm spreading it out across the uh, tile or the CD. Another reason why I like to use my fingers is because I can feel what's going on. I can feel where I've been and I can uh, feel how it's spreading and it just, it just works out best for me. So if you're anything like me when I was first starting out, it took me months to get the courage up to resin because I would read all the horror stories about everybody's horrible experiences. But the key is to be prepared. Do your research, follow the directions, take the right time that you're supposed to take, and get yourself prepared before you do it because it's not hard. It just 
you have to be meticulous. And probably the hardest thing for me is to get out all the dust bugs that fall in. That's to me the biggest challenge. The resin works fine, as long as you're using good resin. I've only used KS resin. I know there's other types out there that are um, reputable, but I just haven't used them yet. So I also have the two pairs of gloves on there just in case I want to take a pair of gloves off. But what I also find, that's, that's my alcohol. If I just rub some alcohol on my gloves, that will dissipate the resin off of them. So before I use the heat gun, I'm not going to leave any remnant garbage on there from the resin. And my hands are pretty clean as I'm doing this. Now, you can use a, a torch. That works just fine, too. Either one is, they're interchangeable. I find that the heat gun works great when I have my trays, though. So now, now that I've popped the bubbles, and you can see them popping when you first start applying the heat, it's crazy. There are thousands of bubbles in there, things that you wouldn't have even seen before. Now I'm going for um, getting any stubborn bubbles out or dust. Now I'm going after the dust. Anything that might have fallen in there, either off the heat gun, off my arm, or my glove, or out of the air. And you'll be amazed how much you'll pull out of there. It is a fish, fishing expedition for sure. And I use that backlight as my reflection to see what's in the resin. Then I'm going to put my tent on and let it sit for a little while. Maybe about 10 minutes or so, I just let them rest and give it a chance for the uh, stubborn bubbles to work themselves back up. Because it takes time, you know. It, all the air bubbles aren't going to come out all the first try. So you got to go back every couple times, every few minutes, to give it another heat shot until your window of about 45 minutes is up where you just want to leave it all alone at that point. So here I'm just, uh, I'm actually using the toothpick here to clean up any of the drips because I don't want the resin to keep pulling off the sides. And I don't want to have a big mess to clean up afterward. Now I'm switching gears, put the tent away for a few minutes, and I'm going to clean up. So the resin is still active, it's still pliable, and while it's still in that state, I like to clean everything up, because then I don't have to wait until the next day to pull everything off. So a couple squirts of the alcohol, rub it down, get everything off of it so it's clean, and then I clean the inside of the little cup, doing the same thing, alcohol, wipe, alcohol, wipe, until everything's clean, and then I can do a second round of resining or a third round that day if I have small batches like this. It's really quite easy. So once again, after the cleanup, I'm back at the CDs, checking them for any drips, anything that might be in there, and one last shot of heat, and then when I'm satisfied that everything looks pretty good, then I'm going to put it to bed. So this is my arrangement when I put these guys to bed. I have a little frame that I built in the garage about a year ago. And it's about three feet by two and a half feet wide. And... I use my bounty uh, wrappers from Sam's Club that I've cut open and spread out. I have my tents that I have, and I also have a heat lamp that I have safely placed in there to keep the temperature around 80 to 85 degrees. That's why I have the thermometer there to make sure that it's maintaining. And I leave the heat lamp on all night long, and I keep them toasty for about, I don't know, 18 hours or so. They're dry to the touch in 12 hours and cure in three days. So here's one of the resin results. It's been over 20, it's been two days now. It looks really nice. And this, I mean, look at that. I just can't find anything to compete with resin. It's beautiful. All right, I hope this was a helpful video for you guys. Thank you for tuning in and we'll be in touch next time.